What is one thing you've always wanted for yourself? No, I'm not talking about ending global poverty or world hunger. I'm talking about something more tangible, something more realistic, something money can buy. Perhaps it is to go to an expensive restaurant. Perhaps it is to go travel the world. Or perhaps it is to go attend that upcoming Justin Bieber concert in September. Whatever your answer is, I'm pretty sure you need money. But wait, you're just a broke student. Where on earth are you going to get that money from? You could get a part-time job, but you don't want to be underpaid. You could do an internship, but your resume isn't stacked. Why not start your own business, your own hustle? After all, haven't you always seen those YouTube ads featuring internet millionaires in luxury condominiums driving limited edition sports cars? They're always selling a course or an ebook with a title that looks something like this. A proven five-figure business system that allows you to fire your boss in 90 days. They're almost Anyone can do. Ooh. Limited time only for 199. I know what you're thinking. What? There's no way am I going to spend 1999 on a course taught by some shady guru. But you know what I was thinking? I was thinking the opposite. I was actually thinking how much my right kidney was worth so that I could sell and afford this course. So that's what I did. No, not sell my right kidney. I took out my credit card, key in the details, and paid the full 1999. Few months into the course, I started to feel dissatisfied. Not only were they annoying trying to upsell me things, but I realized that the content that they were putting out there was stuff that I could, I could have Googled on my own, on the internet, for free. It made me think, if this was so easy, I might as well just do it myself. And that was the sign. That was the sign for me to start my very first official business. So I went to my longtime friend, my current co-founder, Ryan. We grew up together during school. I pitched to him this business idea. I thought that, you know, since we were good friends, I think we could be good partners. He agreed, and together with a huge initial investment of just $400, we started Trident Digital, a marketing agency. So the first thing that we did was Google how to start a business. And Google said you need a detailed business plan from A to Z. So that's what we did. We spent the next few days researching, discussing, brainstorming, and came up with a detailed business plan from A to Z. And it looked something like this. Now, this was the actual plan that we drew up with. And the name, it was really that. So basically, myself and Ryan wanted to have an income of 5,000. Why 5,000? Well, we decided it was a good enough amount to live a comfortable life. So this meant that we needed to generate a total revenue of 10,000. Assuming that we sold our packages for 1,000 each, which was pretty cheap at that time, we needed to acquire 10 clients in one month, every month. 10 clients in one month? Sounds pretty doable, right? Wrong because for the next few months, we had not 10, not five, but zero clients overall. People just didn't want to buy from us. They saw us as young, incompetent, and inexperienced. We neither had the results nor proof to back up our claims. In other words, we were simply too risky for them to put money into. That reality was like a huge slap on our face. We almost wanted to quit then and then. 
But here came the first breakthrough. We had this crazy idea to just provide our services for free. We thought that if clients saw us as risky, why not provide something risk-free? So let me explain. Imagine that you're my client, I provide you the service for free, and in return, you provide me a recommendation, a review, a testimonial, and your permission for me to use your case studies for my other clients. And it worked. More people were eager to see us. Our calendars started to become packed. And we started charging our clients. First three figures, then four, then five figures. As we were slowly inching closer towards our dream Bali lifestyle, we were actually working 80 to 100 hour work weeks. So for those of you curious to know what that lifestyle is like, it's very synonymous to the startup life, aka the dog life. Basically, you sleep on the couch in the office, you work on the weekends, and you have two minute toilet breaks. At first, you were fueled by adrenaline as you first tasted moolah, right? But slowly, the adrenaline fades away. Fatigue sets in, and then bam, everything came crashing down. So I still remember how it happened. It was a Wednesday night alone at the gym. Prior to that, I actually spent the entire day talking to clients, attending to their needs and complaints. Apparently, we kept missing deadline after deadline, and they were fuming mad. <laughs> that took a toll on me. As I was resting in between my sets, it hit me. I just had a mental breakdown. My body turned freezing cold, my vision blurry, and I started to cry uncontrollably. Growing up, I used to pride myself on being able to withstand pain, but nothing could have prepared me for this. When something like this hits you, it takes away everything you have. You feel weak, you feel useless, you feel like you're worth nothing at all. And the worst part is that this feeling carried on into the next few weeks and months as I slowly recovered. Not saying that recovery was a smooth process, there are some times where I had to just get off work early, go to the toilet, and cry. One thing was clear. I was overworked, and this was not sustainable. So here came the next breakthrough. We started hiring. We thought that hiring would be very costly, and that huge initial investment, we agreed that it would pay off well into the long run. And it did. Over time, we started to build our team to 10 full-time team members. And over that span of time, my working hours went down from 16 hours per day to 8 hours per day. Not great, but still a huge improvement. What this allowed me to do is to take a step back, make better company decisions, since I had the mental clarity to do so. Also, by working on the business instead of in the business, I was able to focus on what really mattered. And this allowed us to achieve a record-breaking revenue of six figures. Despite all the progress and the implementations that we made, I still felt quite burnt out. No, I'm not talking about feeling tired or anything. I'm just talking about how work was being mundane and unfulfilling. Apparently, I was not alone. My co-founder voiced out, my team members voiced out, and we were saying how relationships were transactional and our culture was work-oriented. Also, it didn't help that at that period, it was the height of COVID-19. We were suffering the effects of isolation and our productivity and morale were at dangerously low levels. So the issue was clear. It was this, a lack of culture. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Ismail, you talk about Bali. Why not plan a company-wide trip to Bali? As a matter of fact, I did thought about that. 
But remember, it was the height of COVID-19. Planes were grounded, beaches were closed, and we had to all stay in Singapore. So we began to ask ourselves this powerful question. What is one small thing that we can do that requires minimum effort but maximum satisfaction? And here's what we did. We started celebrating our team members' wins. From the top of the mountain, for all to see and for all to hear. It looks something like this. Now, it may not look like much, but we discovered that it actually helped to improve the productivity and overall happiness of our team members. So how this works is that when you actually praise or acknowledge a team member, that team member becomes a rock star, yeah? And suddenly, this improves their productivity as that rock star person want to be another rock star. And all the other team members want to be just like that rock star, yeah? So this improved our productivity overall. Over time, I felt more fulfilled and like work was more meaningful. Not only was I in an environment where we cherish each other's small wins, but I felt like we were part of something bigger, like a tribe aiming towards a common goal. Now, I could go on and on and on talking about challenges that we faced, but these were the three main challenges that we faced and overcome. Regardless if you are an entrepreneur or not, you're bound to face challenges and it can seem quite daunting. But once you overcome them, the results are tremendous. As for me, we started from the bottom. Now we are here. We started from three figures to six figures, from a humble two-man team to a stacked 22-man team. And I get to go on an expensive dinner. I get to go travel the world. And I'm finally able to see Justin Bieber soon, yes. <laughs> All right, dream come true. But here's the thing. These things are not important to me anymore. What's more important was the fact that I fell down, broke down, and lost myself. Because in that process, I was able to get myself back up, renew myself, and find myself. I never thought I would make it this far. I really didn't. Um, if for those of you who know me, you may know me as the class clown, always messing around in class and cracking inappropriate jokes. But I did. And what I want you guys to take home with is take that uncharted path out of your comfort zone. Yes, it can seem very difficult, hard, or even impossible. But once you're able to overcome it, you're able to discover a you you never knew existed. So brace yourself, guys. Take that first step out of that comfort zone and embrace the adventure of a lifetime. Best case scenario, you get to find yourself. Good for you. Worst case scenario, at least you get some money and you're able to spend it on Justin Bieber's ticket, all right? <laughs> Thank you all for your time.